Welcome to the Common Briefing Program. We are a part of the Common Geeking Program, where this is a basically a forum for geek news, where each month, uh, myself, Colin Ketchin, your host, and two other members of the Common Geeking Program recap geek news for the previous month by bringing our favorite stories to the table and then trying to pick what we think is the most important. So, like I said, I am Colin, and I am joined this month by, let's do Ryan Austin. Hello, it is I, your friend, Ryan Mossberger. <laughs> uh, are we supposed to say what we're bringing to the table? I've never done one of these before. Are we supposed uh, to call them our friends? We don't have to. I guess I don't want to make that <laughs> assumption on your part. <laughs> I am very your pushy friend. Of me. Regardless if you want me to be your friend, I am there for you. Yeah, friendship. <laughs> Ryan thinks friendship works backwards than the rest of us do. <laughs> uh, no, you don't have to say what you're bringing. We'll, we can right. save that for your time. Uh, Austin, you go ahead. And I am Austin. I'm back uh, in action. He's back, baby. For what action there is. For, for whatever for action now. there may yeah. be. So we have, <laughs> we normally have one hour to bring you the hottest headlines, but if you stay tuned after the credit section, you will hear why maybe this episode is shorter <laughs> than some of the others. It's been a little, it's, it's been a tough road. Uh, but we're up and running. Did we're each going to get about 10 road? minutes to, so, <laughs> I, what is it? I've been uh, riding my horse. I don't know. I haven't actually <laughs> listened to the song. Horse. I can't sing it too much, otherwise there'll be a copyrights claim, but you, you get the drift. That's true. <laughs> Google's going to filter that shit out. So we are going to each spend probably around 10 minutes or so uh, telling you what we think were the most important, impactful, or interesting stories in geek culture for May of uh, 2019. We're recording this a couple days into June, so it might bleed over a bit. Whoopsie-daisy, whatever. So we're going to kick it off in just a moment but since this is a bit more of a laid back sort of format than most geeking program stuff i always like to open it with just a, how, how you guys how you, how you doing today how you feeling what's the what's the mood how, how are we doing i'm sickies oh no i was just sickies my fiance's mother got me sick ew why because we <laughs> <laughs> the normal what? no we went over to visit there and i had to work like we we went for memorial day um and we had uh i we went over thursday night and i had to work friday but all her mom was working from home also i was like teleworking and she was teleworking so we had to share the same room and she was like coughing and stuff and then all of a sudden like a couple days later i started coughing and stuff she got you sick Shit. for the troops for the troops <laughs> Austin, I'm adopting your uh, <laughs> your response to, hey, someone got me sick. Why? <laughs> uh, it's so good. Uh, Austin, are you sickies? Because I'm also just getting – I had this weird shit on sa- – sorry, I just totally hijacked this. The thing that I started, <laughs> I – on Saturday, I went to bed on Friday perfectly healthy. I woke up Saturday achy. By noon on Saturday, I had a fever of 101 and was sweating my way through a nap. By 5 p.m., I was fine. So I don't know what happened, but I'm doing all right. You don't need to. Yeah. Um. No, I'm good. I just uh today uh because Brooke had work off, mm-hmm. we were supposed to go to the thrift store. Mm-hmm. So we left the house mm-hmm. at like 10 a.m. and we went down to the fucking hipster place in our city. And we got brunch. And then we went to a local... Is that your improper noun for thrift store? No, 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 no. Here, here, here we go. We, get, we got brunch at a, at a little cafe. That was kind of nice. Um, but then, then after that, uh, we went to a store. And uh, this store was not a thrift store. It was called, like, uh, I don't know, second hand chic or some shit and it was like still in like this hipster section but i go mm-hmm. to look at like uh this shirt and and a pair or a pair of pants the, no the first thing i looked at was this pair of pants and i'm like okay these look kind of nice it's it's in my size let's look at the tag 60 dollars. i'm like that's not thrifty <laughs> <laughs> like Dude. even i i don't know so that the, we we stayed there for like only a little bit of time and then we went and found some real thrift stores other places in the city and then we walked around a cemetery for like an hour and a half and then we uh <laughs> went a also, a good, also a good place to get used clothing cemeteries <laughs> 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 well we were just after we had gone to uh the first or this i don't know at some point we were just near a big cemetery and it was something uh, it was a cool place and we hadn't uh so we went to the cemetery and we said hi to some deer that were in the cemetery and then we saw a ghost deer in the cemetery and um yeah <laughs> you, you gonna play that shit there. off like you it's normal ghost, you, you saw a ghost deer yeah there was a deer that was all white oh i thought you meant like an actual ghost it could have been a ghost i don't know i didn't touch it yeah it could be like how in the original aladdin the ghost with the the genie was like transparent but in the new aladdin you 
you can, like he's he looks like he's got like sticky tangible skin maybe we thought ghosts were like cartoon aladdin genie but it's like will smith aladdin genie and like if you slap him it's going to make a sound i think mm. all ghosts were just translucent until uh you know the until... mid 20 teens okay <laughs> <laughs> until guy Ritchie got his grubby paws on will smith <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, I think, um, well, that, that I guess I didn't expect Thrift Shop Judgment and, and, and uh, Ghost Deer. Um, I got a really comfy flannel, though, so that's that's good. It was a, right. su- a successful day, and I'm not sick. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> okay, cool. So we start this off with Ryan, being, uh, with, a, with Ryan being sick and Austin being superior, both in the thrift store and in health. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's take that energy and talk about some geek news. Um, so, I, as always, uh, this being the egocentric Holland show that I deign it to be, I'm going to go first. And uh, I have really only two pieces of news that I want to talk about. I'm not going to say that not a lot happened in May, but there wasn't a lot that I cared about. Well, three things, I guess, because... Okay, well, here's what's going on. In the May episode we talked about, April... And that was right. We recorded it the day before the Sonic the Hedgehog movie trailer came out. Uh, so we had some, I had, I tried to quash the speculation because I didn't expect it to be good and it wasn't good. But for those who weren't aware, um, a few days after, um, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, the, the design of the Hedgehog in the film directed by Jeff Fowler was pretty much maligned. How did you guys feel about the way he, uh, he looked in the trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie? Honestly, I, the teeth were weird. Human (laughs) teeth is really weird. It is. Um, but also I never understood why they're making this movie in the first place Agreed. and the trailer did nothing to assuage me of that notion like uh, what's the on purpose the side, i think did there have to be a purpose sorry um <laughs> continue <laughs> um no i i think i agree with you as as a lifelong patron of sonic the hedgehog i've always thought about how you could turn it into a movie and i'm like nah this shit is so goddamn weird like yeah i don't I, I, he just uh, he's just gonna go fast he's gonna eat some chili dogs and then yeah. dr eggman's gonna be a real mean bad man and get a bunch of foresty creatures yeah like i don't i don't think that i since maybe the age of 12 have tuned into a sonic game for the narrative you mean the complex <laughs> yeah. narrative arc that is the sonic verse well here's the thing it is complicated <laughs> And like deep and rich as fuck, it is like insanely complicated. All right, you lost the... me a do- deep and rich as fuck. A deep and rich does not mean good. <laughs> well, rich you know means something okay. like about the dance. Sonic movie that can be said for it is that, um, mm-hmm. interestingly enough, they are setting it in the Pacific Northwest, right? So in a sense, yes. it's gonna follow at least certain tenets of the Sonic Bible. Well, yes, that's yes. <laughs> Sonic yes. Bible. No, okay, there's a, a oh polygon. Polygon God. does a series of of uh, ridiculous lore analyses, and one of which. Uh, inspects the original Sonic character Bible. Uh, so yeah, it is sort Unraveled of sticking to that. Series, it was but, two uh... pages. The first page is is blue. Second page <laughs> goes fast. He's a, he's an anthropomorphic hedgehog that likes to go fast. Okay, no, so here's character the thing. Bibles. Here's the but thing. But not that so, anthropomorphic. So evidently. Sonic actually takes place on a planet called Mobius, which I'm pretty sure is like Earth like a million years in the future after like a bunch of shit has happened. And like so Several extinction events. Yes, yeah. several yeah. extinction events, and like things have evolved, and now there are these animals everywhere. And in the trailer, we get a tease of Jim Carrey looking like proper Doctor Robotnik with the mustache, and he's surrounded by mushrooms. But like, and there's no place after. on Earth that has yeah, there's no place on Earth that has real mushrooms like that. So it's being set in San Francisco, but then we also see Mushroom Hill Zone. And I'm wondering if maybe the movie is actually going to start as a fish out of water thing, but then Wait, be like out. the Sonic X series where he got thrown like through space and time here and he's trying to get back. The In the trailer, he actually says like, um, I got to save your planet. So there's some indication that there might be some sort of displacement happening. I think I, that mm-hmm. robot being frustrated with all of his loss on mode mm-hmm. because of Sonic went to a new world called Earth and got mm-hmm. in real good and weird with the U.S. government, and then, like, Sonic came to our planet to beat him again. I'm open I think, to it. I think I think that shot of him looking like a, a true Eggman is, like, a past shot of, like, his <laughs> last battle with 
Sonic. <laughs> yeah. No, I, dude, I'm super open. That actually makes a lot of sense. And I'd be okay with anything like that that isn't just Sonic exists in this world because that's a boring 80s film that I don't want to see. I mean, like, if this was the 80s, he uh, a hedgehog would have eaten a radioactive chili dog and then Sonic the Hedgehog would have appeared. I just want to like, say... Uh, been like railing hot 80s chicks and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Teen- That's Teenage horrifying. Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> um, but also, human I'm pretty sure bad. that, like, as per, like, just what we've seen in the trailer, Sonic is probably responsible for, like, thousands of deaths. True. Yes. Um, You should see, dude, at the end of Sonic Adventure in 1998, there's, like, a city that gets, like, destroyed by a water monster and buildings are collapsing. And you hear a crowd cheering his name but there are no people on screen they're just screaming from inside the collapsing buildings you can do it instead of please save me which is what incredible yes no sonic's is, sonic's fucked up but basically the news from may good. is that people were like we don't like this and the studio was like hey we're gonna fix it and we're gonna delay the movie uh so that we don't overwork people because uh, jeff fowler is actually the head of blur studios which is like a really reputable kind of awesome animation studio so that's kind of cool. Um, and now it's going to come out on Valentine's Day. And I think that's fun. I'm going to take... Oh, my God. I'm going to take To get everybody you horny for Valentine's Day, watch it's, this blue hedgehog go like, fast. Dude, fucking so many Cold Steel cosplays are going to be at the theaters just jerking it Paul Rubin style. And I'm... Oh, boy. I, I got to find a theater that that's not happening in. To be fair, mm-hmm. how be much fair. fucking erotic Sonic uh, fan fiction is there? Like, there's a lot. Oh, no. Of there's, there's This so is much. like an excellent marketing move it's yeah no it's they're it's going smart. for the horny ones they're going for the <laughs> furry so are you are you thinking that we're going to get for full frontal sonic nudity like i said so like to get to get people to get people oh, moist for it do you think they're gonna do that is there gonna what does be that mean? does he just take his shoes off <laughs> Nah, man. He he moves aside his his blue her, and his any becomes an Audi, and he lets the audience have what they get okay, to eat I'm their gonna... cake. Are they gonna make it that too. he's got like a shape of water dick? Oh man, yeah. That's oh my god. That's that is the inspiration for this. It's gonna be that I mean, honestly Jones. literary Dub literary Jones bones. Did the cap for Sonic. Yeah, <laughs> literary. <Oof. laughs> The now that's actually Doug Jones in makeup. Bad. Okay, I need to pivot away from this. So <laughs> no, nah, I can um, talk about Sonic's dick for hours, son. That's what I'm afraid oh, of, and what I was I didn't expect. I thought Sonic was gonna take two minutes. That's half my fucking time down the drain because <laughs> you can't stop talking about his crotch part for blue fur. So we're gonna move on to something classy, and we're gonna talk about Star Trek Picard. One. The Star Trek Picard show is just called Star Trek Picard, which is wild because, one, we've never had a Star Trek show um, named after. It's just going to be him. It's just going to be a camera following him around as he picks grapes to make wine. I like... (laughs) What if there's just a spaceship that looks like his head? That's what I was going to say. It's Patrick Stewart (laughs) flying around in a Patrick Stewart spaceship with a crew of Patrick Stewart holograms. Uh, So Patrick Stewart is reprising his role as Captain Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek The Next Generation. Okay, I'm interested. And he... (laughs) So it takes place a while after Next Gen, and we haven't seen anything set further along chronologically in the timeline than Star Trek Nemesis, with one exception. In the J.J. Abrams reboot, the alternate universe was kicked off because the planet Romulus got destroyed, and the Romulans are a big enemy to the Federation, the peaceful organization of Star Trek. And um, the destruction of Romulus catapults Spock into the alternate timeline, and then we get the J.J. movies, hooray. But this is apparently going to deal with the fact that the Romulans are no longer a thing, and we have to deal with the fallout of that. So for the first time, we get to see something, for the first time since 2002, we get to actually look forward in this storyline through uh, what is going to be a 10-episode, like, character investigation of Picard. And the trailer, which showed him returning to his vineyard, uh, which we saw in the series, and at which his brother died in off-screen in Star Trek Generations, he's returned Jesus. to his vineyard um, to make more wine and someone is in voiceover asking him like why did you leave you oversaw this massive rescue operation we presume for the romulans and they ask him why he left star starfleet and we're gonna get some clarity on that i'm very excited i think a lot of people are going to be happy that it's moving the timeline forward and unlike discovery it's not just in like relishing in the past which discovery is also no longer in the past which is great but we talked about that last briefing program 
But all in all, Star Trek Picard has me... I, I guess I'd, I, I'm not assuming it's immediately going to be amazing, but I'm I'm very interested to see what they're doing because Patrick Stewart is like super excited about this project. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Frakes is directing. Uh, Jonathan Frakes tweeted a picture of, of his trombone, which his character Riker played in the show and which he plays in real life. So we're wondering gotcha. if, he's, if he's teasing... Hey, my character is also going to be in the show. Like we He's don't teasing know the trombone. <laughs> <laughs> the trombone is a cameo. <laughs> yeah, that would be so sad if Picard just like has the um has the trombone in his quarters. Like his it sucks flute. that you died. Wah yeah. wah. <laughs> he plays the flute to the trombone. Come on, he trombone. He plays the... Oh, dude, that was the, one of my favorite things. Was the Picard? First of all, the font for the logo. It's in the style of the Kelvin movies. It's got the font of the original series and the Voyager Next Gen D Space Nine com badge for the a and picard and i spent about 15 minutes like rattling off to my girlfriend about how that logo was driving me insane um you're now ex-girlfriend as she ran away my, from yes, this conversation no, she, she has not spoken to me since so the <laughs> um yeah no the flute the they played the star trek theme song with a flute in the trailer and that had me very yeah. excited uh so i think we're finally going to see a return of the resican flute from the inner light now i was going to talk about void bastards a little longer but again sonic dick took over <laughs> Right, but um, Void Bastards sounds interesting, so, like... Yeah, let's talk go for... for it. I'm going to talk very briefly and let the conversation go where it is. So, the thing that has been occupying me the most this month is a new video game called Void Bastards. It is developed by a developer named Blue Manchu, comprised of previous employees of Irrational, who made Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite. And the game, it came out on Xbox Game Pass on launch, and I'm a subscriber to that, so I didn't pay anything for it. I just have it, and I've been playing it. It is a first-person shooter, like, procedural roguelike strategy game. And it's interesting because you have a map of yeah. ships and you need to collect things. And you, um, you as just like a, a nameless, like you are literally like in dehydrated food packets. And then when they hydrate them, you turn into a person and you oh, nice. are that person. And the computer's like, go fetch these parts so that we can get out of here. And so wait, you are you to... the void bastard? Uh, I assume so. Nobody's name is void bastard. So right. Uh, but like the different like characters the... are the void bastards. It's not yes, like the aliens. Because you, you're, you're operating from a ship called the Void Ark, so I assume you are the bastard. Okay. Um, so it is a roguelike in that it's you need to try to proceed through this randomly generated like array of ships. And the network of ships is very much just like, okay, you have three ships in front of you. Um, choose which one you want to go to. And each one has like different randomly rolled rooms and enemies and stats and modifiers and loot. So you have to choose which one has the most important stuff. And then once you move forward, then you have another selection of ships. And you can see the network of ships and sort of plan out your moves. And you have to be really careful about what you are collecting and what you're searching for. Because mm -hmm. it's very easy to say, hey, I'm going to go to this ship because it has all this ammo. And then you run out of gas. And then you're like, oh, I should have gone to the ship with more gas. And yeah. it is for a procedural I've never had, one, a procedural game keep me this interested for this long. I've already played it for several hours but two roguelikes get old for me like i think hollow knight is a fantastic game but i dropped off just because the the punishment of losing things is not a motivator for me when i don't have enough time to play the games i want to play but in here as you craft items with your loot collections those are maintained from life to life hmm. so you lose some stuff but you don't lose significant progress so it doesn't feel quite as much like a kick in the teeth um but it's, it's clever, it's funny, it uses cel-shaded uh, style to really embrace a comic book look, like all the menus look like uh, cells in a comic book, and all the menu options are like little dialogue boxes. Uh, you see like action text indicating that there are enemies nearby. It's a very cool game. Uh, I don't know what the actual price is, but it's on it Steam. It's got $30 a... on... Mm, might, be wor it might be worth it if you're looking for something to like just kind of chew away at. Um, it's got an 82 on Metacritic, it's got a 9 out of 10 on Steam, and it's got a five out of five in my heart. Well, four out of five. It's got some problems, but I like it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my mm, stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys have touched it, looked at it, or have questions about it, but I've been liking it. I think I've heard of it. It's been on my radar, but I haven't actually. This actually forced me to look at the video for mm -hmm. the trailer, and it look. I love a good roguelike, mm -hmm. and this this might scratch that itch. But at thirty bucks, I don't know. I might I might wait until it's on sale. Yeah, well, dude, wait for this upcoming week because uh, E three is happening, and Game Pass is coming to PC. Like 
the Xbox Game Pass is a ridiculously good value, and depending on what's available on the PC, I mean, it might be might be worth ten bucks for one month and then cancel your subscription to play it. True, true. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's yeah. a solid point. Yeah, cool. That's all I got. Uh, so we're gonna move on. Ryan, uh, what geek news have you brought us from the ether of May 2019? All right, I got. I think I've got two things. Mm-hmm. First, we're gonna we're gonna get into the craziness that is Death Stranding. Uh, <laughs> an actual <laughs> gameplay trailer yep. uh, came out earlier uh, this May, just like a week or two ago. At this point, so how we kind of like know what announced? it's about now. It was announced in 2016 at E3. 2016? Yeah. Hot like, but that was the very it, first, that was very first, like, weird trailer of... Uh, Norman Reedus. Like, Norman and Reedus, like, fetus. washing up on a beach with, like, a baby. So, yeah. like, things have developed a bit. And then the second thing, I'm going to talk about the HBO series chernobyl oh which I want to hear is this. fucking fantastic i've been considering watching uh please please dive into both of these things all right so death stranding uh for people that don't know about it um if you've ever played a metal gear solid game they are both amazing and insanely complex in storytelling to the point of i'm gonna be honest like stupidity like <laughs> the the, the storyline makes no sense and it, it's self-revisionist like each new one often like goes back into the past and changes something or changes somebody's motivation it completely won- wonks up the timeline and makes things weird uh but the reason they're so good and some people really like the story sometimes but um uh it is the like lead publisher of the game um hideo kojima who is like an og og japanese game maker he's been there since they were making super nintendo games he still looks surprisingly young even though i think he's in his 50s he looks like he's he's a wild man yeah he does um but yeah so he's a wild man he's got a crazy brain that works i guess on a different level but does not make sense when he says anything but this is his brainchild um this was basically his fuck you to konami he took this really hot property that basically got everybody fucking hot horny for it once they saw norman reedus wash up on a shore of black water um noticing ryan gets horny for a pretty wide variety of yeah. things. Uh, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta get, you gotta get your rocks <laughs> off when you can. Uh, but yeah, this is his first game after separating from Konami. Uh, and it's pretty buck wild. The trailer showed off a lot of, I mean, a decent amount of gameplay for something that we'd really only seen very cinematic, tightly scripted trailers for previously. Which seem um, to have very little to do with each other. Yes. Yeah. Just to be, yeah. <laughs> so from what I've been able to break down uh, from the trailer itself and from what other people are assuming and guessing is that Norman Reedus, I believe his name is, like last name is Bridges. It's like something Bridges, Jeff Bridges. I don't know. Uh, I thought, uh, what? Michael uh, Bridges. I I I had the idea that it was a Steam a Steven. Sorry, Steve, uh, it might be. Uh, but he works for this trans. He's like a Bridge transcontinental Stevens. delivery man, is what it seems to be. Like a lot of the a lot of the gameplay, it showed you with a ginormous backpack traversing obstacles and then getting caught in rain and people trying to stop you from delivering your package. And what little bits of story that were coming out, it seems like something something called bts uh they didn't really explain the acronym um arrived in the united states and kind of tore the infrastructure apart so now everything is very separated um and none the united states isn't cohesive i think at one point norman reedus's character says you to the president of the united states you're the president of shit <laughs> yeah um not gonna because, lie this is starting to sound like sonic unleashed from 2008 yeah. <laughs> go on but yeah it's <laughs> So it's really, it's, uh, it gave a little more hint. I think we're a lot more solid in what the game is. It reminds uh, hey, me wait. a l- yeah. Sorry, his name is Sam. All right, Norman's Sam name Bridges, is Sam. right? Yeah. And I think he works for a company called Bridges. <laughs> 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 so, uh, but I think we have a good idea. Uh, just from the gameplay that we saw, it looks fairly similar in style to Metal Gear Solid Five. Seeing yeah. Norman Reedus run around made mm-hmm. me think of watching uh, Solid Snake. Well, I guess it's not Solid Snake. It's Poison yeah. Snake or whatever, but running around in solid uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. A lot of the wheels, I feel like if they had had the same engine as before, because I don't think they have access to it anymore, they would have been using it for this game. It was probably in Hideo Kojima's mind when he was making Metal Gear Solid Five. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it gave us a lot of clues what you're going to be doing. You're going to be running around the continental United States trying to connect things, it looks like. I'm not going to lie. When you said intercontinental delivery person, I physically deflated. And like when you described that the land has become disincorporated, I got that 
oh, that's an interesting idea. That little seedling of excitement that isn't anything now, but like the potential <laughs> there, I can I mean, see there, why people are excited. There's potential. Uh, it looks interesting. I mean, it really comes down to how it plays. I think one of the best things about Metal Gear Solid 5 was that pretty much no matter what you were doing, it was a super fun experience. The, mm-hmm. the gameplay was so tight. So if they carry that into this, even if you are just running around doing weird missions, it'll probably be a ton of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it also showed off they have a huge list of characters and in typical Kojima fashion, little sexist. But <laughs> uh, he named two female <laughs> characters. One is Mama and the other one is Fragile. And there's only three total from the trailer. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. and then the president who has cancer. Um, so, <laughs> uh, but God then like, uh, I think. He but some just... of the other people have weird names. Like there's a guy named Heartman. There is another guy named Hard to Kill Man. And then uh, <laughs> Die Hard the... Man. <laughs> Die Hard Man. Yeah. Are these rejected so... like Mega Man villains. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty strange. I'm interested to see where this story goes. Um, but it looks buck wild. And in some quotes, he's he's trying to be. And in tip, this is also in very typical Hideo Kojima fashion. And trying to explain his process, he has made it even <laughs> more confusing. So in a previous quote that he had, I don't have the date, but he said the first thing that man invented as it like or used as a tool was a stick. You know, keep things at a distance. You know, you use it as a weapon. It can be a tool, like pushing things, prodding things. But he said the second thing that was created was rope, and that was used to keep things close <laughs> and to bring things closer to you. <laughs> He says okay. <laughs> every other game made before Death Stranding represents the stick. His game is the first one that represents the rope. Now, do you think you understand what this game means now? <laughs> I um, I care less about the game and I care more about the articles about the game I'm going to read <laughs> applying that I mean that was paraphrased a little bit that was paraphrased but... like he's like oh you know punch button you know that pushes that's an attack that brings you away my game is about bringing things to if if he's like, talking about like new new means of interacting with games like i'm all for that because me- means of interacting I mean, with games have not changed dramatically with the exclusion of but le- what i mean like console video gaming experiences yeah. honestly have been very similar and increasing we'll only in fidelity it looks yeah. very it vr look mobile look that stuff crazy. obviously not with i mean it 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 could be some really weird ways of doing stuff. I mean, they have uh, some fairly interesting looking ways of terrain traversal. Yeah. Uh, in, in the gameplay footage, it showed him getting out a ladder and then that ladder extending to like 400 feet and then him crawling up said ladder up onto <laughs> yeah. a And then ledge, Gimli pushing it down, it smooshing yeah. dozens of Urukai underneath him. <laughs> kind of. And then it shows him getting a rope and baton out and then placing the baton and like traversing downwards. Uh, so we'll see. It did show a little bit of combat it seems that under certain circumstances i think when it's raining these bts appear and you have something called a void baby attached to you which allows you to detect them and then you have some kind of computer arm like thing on your shoulder that I guess allows you to. Yeah, detect no, them I in saw there way. was there were that was leaked like a, or came out like a year ago. We saw a little bit of like Norman Reedus running around with an armed backpack. Like I saw that. Well, a yeah, year yeah. Ago. But I think that they're actually consolidating. There was some information about like what that did and what mm. the Void Baby is, but I gotcha. think it links up with the Void Baby and through the arm and the Void Baby, you were able to detect these extra. I don't even know what they are. Ghosts, I guess. <laughs> and it shows if you are captured by the ghost. I think Hideo Kojima also said if you end up dying you are sent into this black ooze and when you reappear out of the black ooze you i guess are in this other kind of upside down like dimension where there is basically the scars of battle are ever present so in the gameplay video he gets sucked in by a bt and then shows up in world war one which is kind of strange because they're in america so it doesn't really make a lot of sense but um the, he pops up in world war one and there's like world war one tanks and then mad mickelson's character shows up with a baby and five other people connected to his butt and then uh... <laughs> some... <laughs> and then it shows actual combat so you will be able to have weapons it seems like um you will shoot people but isn't it, it made it clear at least from the trailer that that wasn't the focus so yeah. interesting all around uh i have have no i still don't really know what this game is gonna be like yeah it could this be is amazing it could be garbage i'm so fucking intrigued and i don't want to care about it because it's so such vague bullshit but like it is so interesting i tried to avoid yeah. it for so long like i love 
Hideo Kojima, but also hate him. Like I, I skipped Metal Gear Solid Four just because I was so pissed that because I heard I was like, uh, like he'd been getting worse and worse with the cutscenes, and then I, I read a review, a yeah, where four you play for five minutes, and then it's a forty-five minute movie, and then you play for five minutes, and then it's like a thirty-minute movie. It's like fuck you, I'm not buying your game. Yeah. So then I was like, <laughs> I'm not doing, it. and then I was like, oh, I'm not gonna play five either. And then I found out that basically five has zero cutscenes. I was like, <laughs> fuck yeah, I'll play five. <laughs> About fucking time. <laughs> All right, so we're we're yeah. we're over ten minutes. Uh, if we want to keep so... this conversation going, I'm okay I, with it. I do want to kind of talk about Chernobyl, Austin. I know you've been you've I mean, been looking for some Death Stranding talk. Let oh, loose, yeah, and then we'll go. I just yeah. I just find it hard to imagine that this is like the first game that's going to focus on player interactions that it's are the not first game focusing fighting on rope. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I just like. I mean, you can... I do like that he said, oh, other games are about punching and kicking, and in the trailer he does show, like, Norman Reedus' <laughs> character and yeah, punching and but, like, kicking. I'm just saying, though, like, I, I know that, like, people can make them descend into anarchy, but I just want to say, like, fucking, there exist Minecraft servers where no fighting goes on, and people just, like, build shit and try to, you know, help each other not die to zombies and stuff. That's not about, it's not all about punching zombies. It's about building things. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. That's why I'm interested, like, what that could possibly mean, because I can't conceive of a means of interacting with a video game that is revolutionary from what we have yeah. seen when it's using the same platform that everything else is using. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I'll hold my reservations. It could just be the storytelling and some other narrative things that kind of bring it together. The story could literally be about a rope. It could be about rope. I wouldn't be surprised if in his one of his cases he has an invisible rope he's been, like, trawling around the entire time. Well, I mean, I'm <laughs> pretty sure he wants to use that because he's talking about the 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 strands right yeah like, the strands he wants that he wants the metaphor to be all over the place yeah i thought i didn't yeah. interpret it as strands i thought it was literally like him getting stranded places well it's a well, direct we did... reference to strands as beaches because another yeah. word for beaches is strands but he also likes the idea of rope as being like a strand and then connecting things with the rope every other video game yeah. was a stick mine is a beach <laughs> is he beach <laughs> All right, what's Chernobyl about? I've never uh, heard of this. My first, uh, have I have no idea Chernobyl? what Chernobyl is going to be about. The, this is such a mysterious fucking title. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 German. If if people, no, it's not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if <laughs> most people know about Chernobyl, it was a massive nuclear <laughs> meltdown or near meltdown that happened in. <laughs> in eastern Ukraine. Um, uh, I can't remember exactly how far out of Kiev, but it was near the city of Pripyat, uh, which a lot of people know now as the setting of a very all gillied up a mission in modern combat. And uh, Call of Duty Modern Combat, where you uh, use a 50 caliber rifle to take out the ultra nationalist or the ultra nationalist leader. So everybody kind of knows that, and they know a little bit about um, Chernobyl as a national event in geopolitics around the time, a few years before the fall of the USSR. But this HBO miniseries kind of condenses down that event and shows kind of the real world drama and how buck wild this event was, how earth shattering. It is, and how honestly apocalyptic it could have been. Um, mm. It's it's kind of crazy. It. I hear everyone talking it's, about it. I want to watch it. It's really good. It's very well written. Um, I would say the characters in it are very amazing. If you know, you'll know you'll like it after the first episode. If if you are, I've I've heard it. Uh, uh, compared pretty well, and I think it's pretty true to a horror movie where mm -hmm. radiation plays the evil person in the horror movie, the killer, uh, and it's a pretty apt metaphor. You know, it's invisible unless you have the right. Um, it's invisible and undetectable unless you know you've already dead. You've already had enough where you're dead, yeah. or you have some kind of uh, technology to detect it. But I mean, it really goes through. Um, as an engineer, that is a horrifying talked... description. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as an engineer, we talked about Chernobyl in one of my uh, mechanical engineering classes. It's basically an example of what. Not not to do um it's pretty important engineering like the first you, like, you <laughs> if you're, you're ever to do, confronted but... with an emergency situation don't start writing a tv show about it yeah. <laughs> fix the problem first yeah but um basically from beginning to end 
of the Chernobyl disaster was caused by a series of factors that are fairly common no matter where you are, like groupthink, um, mm. infrastructure being used uh, to cover up a problem, not to fix a problem, um, people not listening, uh, superiors not listening to their underlings, um, all these things. And in the movie, it does a really good job of basically explaining <clears throat> through acting exactly how something like this can happen. It doesn't show you, I think the last episode, which I still haven't seen, it actually goes through all of the uh, mishandling beforehand uh, for the most part the re- one of the reasons that the reactor blew was that it was so mismanaged mm. that uh, one little a, a known glitch but a secret glitch to the public um, caused it to overload and blow up classic um, but they had mishandled it so much like they had found out like there's little bits throughout the series they find out one of the lead engineers is like 24 years old meaning he has literally zero experience um, I'm I was 24 the- years old don't make me in charge of a big bomb yeah, house exactly yeah. um, and then I was listening there's a companion podcast to the to the mini series that go that talks with the uh, director and his journey of like trying to figure out all this stuff. They found out that like the head of that site, um, he had a degree in nuclear physics. It was a mail order degree, and he had no fucking clue. So he was like the lead scientist on the grounds, but he was a party lackey. He was a bureaucrat. This was yeah. his reward. All he had to do was check off a box saying you have advanced nuclear physics degree. So he took a mail order class and got it. Oh um, my so god! So he had no idea. So and it was like that just from like beginning Neil to deGrasse end. Tyson on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Um, but it, it kind of. One of the major issues that it took them so long to react, uh, they didn't really react like it was a severe incident until like a few days later. And a lot of that has to do with uh, people's superiors on the ground not listening to them. A lot of them are like, no, it's blown up. I can see there's like there's a big hole where our building should be. It's not it's not a, it's not a reactor anymore. It's an open air radiizer. Like it's just yeah. emitting radiation. Kind of sounds and, like, um, like the movie The Big Short, which I watched recently, not in yeah, and, like the the subject matter, but but in like, in <laughs> like the inspection react. of a catastrophic failure of a, of a, of a yeah. device. And people were like, oh, how? and like their response was, no, you're wrong. You must be wrong. Like, then tell me, how would, how would this reactor fail? If it act, if it's failed, yep. then how did it fail? And then like, well, I don't know. Like I'm 24 years old. I don't fucking know how <laughs> half this shit works. But Dude, like they won't story say of my that. life. Um, but yeah, yeah, so it's it's ball. It, the dr- the drama is real. You get to see. I think it's a really good. As an engineer, I love shit like this. Yeah, where <laughs> it brings it brings some really catastrophic and very interesting science and onto a level playing field for everybody because everybody can understand when people are acting out. Like, oh, you get radiation poisoning. These are this is what happens to you. Like, yeah. your skin becomes red. Like, you get burns. Like, you're fine for a day or two, and then you slowly but surely turn into jelly over the course of like three or four Jesus days Christ. and it shows like oh how it actually does a pretty good explanation of how like a nuclear reactor works in like the first two episodes and it shows um a lot of the effects of um poor engineering work and how politics can really get in the way of doing what is right uh it's it's an amazing show if you haven't seen it i it, hi, especially if you're feeling that game of thrones drought highly recommend sounds great <laughs> all right well with that austin sorry if i went over that's right, fine Austin, what uh, what are you bringing to the table? Yeah, so um, really, my two things are kind of one thing, but um, and I want to make this clear that I was thinking of this before Keenan started spouting off about it in the group chat. Okay, um, but I wanted to talk about two uh, Wizards of the Coast uh, events. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, first. I'm going to talk about um, the new show that was just announced. There's going to be a, a, a Magic the Gathering uh, Netflix series. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a thing. And then I want to talk about a recent... Uh, there's a recent rules change to uh, competitive magic that is... Uh, I don't know. It's a thing that I want to talk about because uh, I'm interested in card games. Even though I haven't been able to play it since I've moved here, really. It's so <laughs> sad. Don't doesn't um, Magic have like an official uh, like app or web based game now? Uh, yeah, they do have a uh, uh, Magic uh, the Gathering Arena. I mean, they've mm. had an official uh, like Magic online client, but they've only released these things for uh, Microsoft. And um, I haven't been keeping up with Arena because I have to re-download it each time mm, that gotcha. uh, 
each time that it updates just because of the way that the uh, the uh, wine bottler package thing works. And gotcha. I'm lazy. Um, so what do we know any, about the show? Because so, I, I know one thing about it, and that's it. Yeah, so the the one big thing that they've put in the headlines is that the Russo Bros are producing it, um, right? Is the, yep. that's was that the thing that you were thinking? That's that's the only thing I, I guess too, because there's two of the brothers, but it's the one piece of information yeah, I need. They're they're just a unit. They're a hive mind of boy. Um, which uh, <laughs> I don't know. I can understand why you want to get uh, producers who are well known at this point for producing something that has made a lot of money. Um, not like a huge fan of them having the Russo brothers. Like if they're going to sort of like micromanage the studio and stuff to say like, this is my vision for the magic, the gathering universe, because the magic, the gathering universe has been super fine without the Russo brothers input for well, some, from someone who's followed the stories. Are uh, you familiar with the Russo brothers work pre MCU? Um, uh, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I'm going to say no, because I don't know if I've seen things that they've done without my community, that they have done, community right? and arrested development. Those those okay. were the things that got them hired to do Captain yeah. America. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> that's huh. why you that's why you always see like community cameos in all the movies. Yeah. Um yeah, so I I guess I agree like the idea of big studio men coming in to do this this deep lore story and I, there's no indication that they've been patrons of Wizards of the Coast properties. Is well, there? Aside uh, from, like, no, D&D, they, they said they released an official statement. Oh, wait, I can pull it up. Um, that said, we have been huge fans and players of Magic the Gathering for as okay. long as it has been around. So Good. being able to help bring these stories to life through animation is a true passion project for us. Um, and then they said something else about it, uh, overseeing the creation of an all-new storyline, mm-hmm. uh, contending with stakes larger than any one world can hold, which is just some fluff that I'm like, guys, they've already done storylines where they cross <laughs> between fucking planes of existence. But cool, okay, sure. Uh, I mean, it, it's not like they're doing this from the good of their heart. Wizards of the Coast are like, hey, go make us some money. Yeah. I mean, it makes, I mean, you can't blame them too much for accepting a job offer. <laughs> well, we also, we also I, gotta I zoom out and, them, and like, I producer, can blame them. Yeah, right. producer is, is, I'm not going to say an imp- it's very important to to production, but it's not a director. Like the ultimate vision is going to yeah. lie with the people that they choose to like functionally execute on whatever the mm-hmm. Russo brothers put forward, and they're going to have input on what makes it through. But it it's um yeah, I just hope they're yeah. really hands off with it because like yeah, I'm I guess not, I agree with that sentiment. I don't want them to retcon all of the uh, LGBT representation that is in the Wizards universe so that they can make like the first gay background character again. Yeah, just you know stuff like that i'm just kind of leery of uh but no that I, that's in jest i'm sure that they won't do that just because like that's that would be kind of an overstep into whatever characters they can uh bring out um uh this next part is just for keenan this is just for keenan to hear like okay. everyone else you can listen if you want to go ahead hit that skip but 30 when, button. when keenan started talking about this in the group chat he was like it's about the quote unquote planeswalkers like he didn't know what the fuck that is i mean like if you know magic <laughs> i know what that is i don't know anything yeah, about magic i don't they're know just, planeswalkers they're just are. the they are they the, walk the people plane? who go between the different planes of existence and make the stories more cohesive because they can be present in several different stories. I actually preferred uh, Ryan's inquisitive answer that led me to think like <laughs> he doesn't know the difference between a magic planeswalker and Samuel L. Jackson and snakes on a plane. Right. <laughs> Uh, but also I... something kind of important i guess for it that makes it uh like in terms of gameplay for the game that is the larger part of this franchise is mm-hmm. that like the, the the duels that magic uh simulates are like each player is supposed they play you play as a planeswalker who's like gathered all these ties to different lands where you get your magic powers from and you spells and you summon bears and shit um is that, so like it makes it a, a little more feature? personal uh what summoning bears is that like <laughs> you know, oh no magic, bears that game yeah no no bears bears, are, uh, right? bear, uh, bears is one of the first cards uh i well it was it was definitely present in the first set it's a green huh. two mana uh two mana creature that's a two two and it's also become synonymous for any like vanilla two two creature is called a bear just gotcha. in the in the lingo and in the most in the set that in the new, the new set modern horizons that is getting spoiled they're making a bunch of cards that are like overpowered but they're not going into standard rotation they're going straight to one of the older formats and they have a lot of bear cards it's exciting they have, just... it's crazy 
Uh, but yeah. I'm going to indict myself a little and say that, indict my nerd cred, and I, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say it, I, I kind of hate Magic the Gap. Oh, why? <laughs> I've never played it, but why do you hate it? Uh, oh, no, I have played it. I've played never gotten it, into it. As someone who has played it, it, it has all of the, I don't know, it's like poker mixed with how much money you got. Right. <laughs> so it's really frustrating. It can be really frustrating to play. Yeah, no, that's why it's, I only play uh, Commander. Do you? Uh, yeah. Yes. I can't afford. Yeah. I, I've never touched Mod. Modern. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's mm. it's just kind of frustrating to play if you've never played. There is a very high wall of entry and like knowledge. Uh, people yeah, a lot of that does have to do with bad and... communities, though. Well, I mean, uh, I, I mean, that's that's something I see in other, you know, obviously trading card games like owe their legacy to to Magic. So like, you know, even Hearthstone and Elder Scrolls Legends, and then you know all the other actual you know physical trading card games, like they're based on that. And I find that they also share that barrier to entry. So I I think that I don't know if that's like just a Magic complaint. Like, do you have that problem with other games? No, mm. not. I mean, there's other, I've played other card games. I, I played a few other card games and they're fine. I, there's just something about magic. It's the right amount of complexity where I feel like if I felt well, like if I went full heel into it, I feel like I'd be very, I could get into it and get obsessed with it. But also I don't feel like spending thousands of dollars to yeah, get the decks that's that you game. need. So what's it? What's with the so, rule change? Um, So the rule change. Uh, So at the beginning of a game of magic and so, so at the beginning of a game of magic, uh, say you're just playing a two-person game. You each you, you shuffle your decks. You cut your opponent's deck if you're going in a tournament setting, right? Um, and then everyone you, you draw a hand of seven cards. Now, what happens is that the player who's going first will declare whether they're going to mulligan. If you draw a hand that is entirely spells or entirely lands, you're not going to be able to do anything until you draw the other type of card. Mm-hmm. So you're going to say. I'm going to mulligan so I can draw a new hand. Um, generally, when uh, there have been a couple different kinds of mulligans that over the years, um, the most recent one has been the Vancouver mulligan. If you'll see, I'm making air quotes because uh, that's what I would do with my hands in this situation. And it is, in fact, what I did with my hands in I'll this situation. Insert, I'll put in a whooshing sound effects to the audio so people don't miss a thing. Excellent. Mm. Um, and uh, so for the way that it's been going with the Vancouver mulligan is that, uh, you know, you draw... Um, you can mulligan to six cards from mm-hmm. your seven card hand. You shuffle them back in, draw six cards. Uh, then you decide to keep that or mulligan again. Each time you mulligan, you would draw one fewer cards because it's like, you know, you're trying to reduce the randomness of the deck and give yourself an advantage. So taking away that one card gets rid of some of that advantage. Um, but then to counteract the fact that you're you might you might mulligan down to like four or five cards. You're at a severe card disadvantage. It lets you the the Vancouver mulligan had it so that after you do that, you just look at the top card of your deck and you can decide whether to keep that card on top or put it on the bottom. In an mm. effect that in Magic lingo is called scrying. So like it, it it helps you to say like okay, if I mulligan down to a few cards, at least I have some control over what I'm drawing in the future. So that you know I might be able to better play plan out my turns and stuff. Um, but what happens now going forward is the London Mulligan, oh. um, and in the London Mulligan, um, <laughs> instead of doing that, whenever you Mulligan, you still draw seven cards, mm-hmm. but you have to take one of the. So for your first Mulligan, you have to take one of the cards from your hand and put it on the bottom of your deck, but you get to choose which one you do it to, and then you you have to put more cards on the bottom of your deck to, if you Mulligan down more, right? I wish I wish the I wish the listeners could see the look on Colin's face. <laughs> I want the so, overlay of like the complex max uh, math uh, thing uh, yeah. <laughs> equations over the lady with like the four quadrant meme. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm following. Keep going. Yeah, and so like uh, so this one you can mulligan down very far and still have like a large degree of control over what goes into your opening hand because you get to choose which cards you honestly don't give as much of a shit about to put on the bottom of your deck. Right. And in doing so, uh, you can. So, so some people have been some people are worried. A lot of a lot of players, a lot of more. I don't want to say a lot of more casual players, but I don't have a better. Uh, you can name, just say dirty casual I, players. We uh, know how you really No, feel. no, because I don't want to say dirty casual because like a lot of these people are more involved with the game than I am at the moment. Mm. So like, oh, so you're the eh, dirty casual. I'm the They're dirty casual casuals. right now. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't participated in stuff in a while. Um, but anyway, a lot of people are concerned that like this will give certain deck archetypes uh, 
huge advantages and make them super powerful. Because you have um, more control over what you can pick. If you have things that are built yeah. on like certain power moves, you can like yeah, really so be selective like a, in how you execute that. Yeah. So if you have like a certain combo deck, you can like be like, oh well, I need to keep these two cards because they're part of my win condition, and these ones are just like things to draw into the things that I already have in my hand. So I can just put them on the bottom, and I'll keep drawing new cards, and I know that those cards on the bottom will not be drawn. So like I've reduced some of the randomness quite a lot more than I would have with the Vancouver Mulligan. Um, and a lot of pro par- players are like, nah, this sounds cool. It'll make aggro stronger, which is nice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. the passion because I get no I do I I'm not being facetious at all because That's this like is how a I teacher get. says after you give a book report I you know love the passion <laughs> That's the thing I don't mean this I don't mean this backhandedly at all I'm so sincere because like again you heard me go off about like just the logo for the trailer of Star Trek Picard and how I can go off on that right. for 15 minutes I super <laughs> appreciate someone who knows and cares about a thing so much where you can say like Oh, oh, uh, hey, uh, they changed the mulligan rules. And then you're like, let me write a fucking paper. Like, I love that. <laughs> I think it's great. I yeah, don't but read so, those papers, I don't know. So but my, it's great. I think uh, the, th- the thing that I want to, I think that we should get out of this is that, like, the pros are okay with it. Like, uh, that I've seen in articles that I've read, pros seem to be pretty okay with it. So I'm like, uh, th- you know, the smart people are probably right. If it turns out to make certain things too powerful, um, that might be bad. But that's also something that, like, people say, if a certain card becomes too powerful or a certain deck becomes too powerful because of a mulligan rule change maybe the card was really a little overpowered all the time so balance issues from this might uh it it might not change the balance issues so much as reveal existing balance issues yeah yeah or yeah reveal existing problems with game design and i mean you know they've been changing up the mulligan rules for quite a while every couple of years trying to get something that you know works the best and you know wizards hasn't felt like they found it yet so it's a cool thing if you're into uh either magic the gathering or uh i don't know like game design on this weird level where that's what's got me interested is like i like that's something and you and i we play destiny a lot together and you you have your finger on the pulse of that more than i do i i like your perspectives on hey (laughs) hey hey they adjust did this number by like five and it's going to change everything i'm like okay maybe <laughs> not but let's talk about it it'll at least make crucible a lot more annoying <laughs> for the next five weeks or whatever it will make austin less happy when we win <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right cool so i think we're gonna wrap our expository segment there we're going to jump into the rating, which in this program is we are going to form a consensus uh, upon uh, what we think is the most important of these stories for May. What is the top story for May? And we're going to go around in a circle. We're going to each cast a vote in the event of like a tie or lack of consensus. We'll deliberate and we'll figure out what we want it to be. So I'm going to go first. I th- Can I just interject? Yes. I'm not going to tell you my vote. Uh, cause that would be a dick move. Um, but I just want to say the event of a tie, wouldn't that only happen if we all chose something different? There are just three of us. Yeah, no, exactly. It's Jeff. Okay. Yes. Or we're all going to choose Sonic's dinger. right? <laughs> like- <laughs> so that's the thing is I, d- I like to discourage voting oh, for your own thing. So oh, I want to no, say he, I'm, he's, he's he's frozen. frozen. Oh no, he's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm casting either, either for, I think, um, Chernobyl or Sonic because <laughs> because I think Sonic has had the broadest impact that was like Dude, what? it was no it's okay not actually fucking Chernobyl the geopolitical incident that's not what I'm talking I'm talking about the HBO television <laughs> Sonic's program. dinger took down the USSR <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so- Sega does what Sovien don't. Nope. So oh, the geez. the Sonic the Hedgehog film like penetrated like mainstream headlines, and I think yeah, I think that its impact is undeniable. I uh, the thing I take away mo- the thing that I'm most likely to act upon that I learned from this show is I might watch Chernobyl. So I think depending on how you guys go, I'm gonna throw <laughs> mm. my cards in one of those two piles. Ryan, how do you feel about these stories? Wait, are you making your vote conditional upon our votes? Well, yeah, it's not. That seems like cheating. This isn't well, a democracy. Not. This is this is a top story. 
you. This is news reporting. This is a this is an editor's room, and we're figuring out what the public is gonna hear. I vaguely remember from the last time you couldn't pick your own segment. I right? said I discouraged it. All I right, said, well, then I mean, I, I'm discouraged to pick my own segment. Um, hmm. It's it's <laughs> not for the sake of you shouldn't pick it. It's like I don't want people to bring things for the sake of winning. I want it to be us figuring out what is the most. If your thing, if you believe that the stuff you've brought is like the most important or impactful, go for it. But yeah. I remember my last time I was here, I said wieners all the way. That w <laughs> We've had some format changes <laughs> I mean, since I, uh, since um, I but yeah, bomb so I'm threaded to think, Oscar Mayer. Uh, you all, everybody had some pretty cool stuff to talk about. Um, magic seemed really intense. I won't lie. Um, <laughs> oh, that I, London sorry. Mulligan well, got ever hot. Mulligans. <sighs> Honestly, the funniest thing that happened was the funniest and I think the most far-reaching in news was Sonic like having to get redesigned because people were like, what the <laughs> fuck were you people thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do think that's probably the funniest thing. Although I, I like Colin will say I think Chernobyl like a very hot piece of media. Um, I think good, and I talked about more. All right, mm. okay. And Austin, how do you, how do you feel about what we have discussed? What are the uh, so run by me? What exactly? What so. I, the most far-reaching thing? The most impactful thing? <laughs> the most powerful thing? Um, Sonic Stinger. <laughs> <laughs> I want to leave all three categories. I, leave that a, I don't want to set a hard 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 criteria on that. I said hard three times right after you said Sonic Stinger, <laughs> and I'm disappointed in myself. But I want this to be, if you had to pick something out of this to like share on your social media and be like, guys, this is the most important thing that we talked about. Not that you would ever do that specifically, but if I made you do it, if we got paid yeah. to do it, uh, patreon.com slash geeking program, then you could... Uh, <laughs> The, then the, which would you choose? Uh, so Sonic, Star Trek, Picard, Void Bastards, Death Stranding, Chernobyl, yeah. Magic, Magic. Yeah. So um, I mean, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> assume that we've all been like accurate with the things that we've said mm -hmm. about all this this stuff. Mm -hmm. But were we precise? And <laughs> um, you. no, we weren't. Uh, <laughs> that's not even a question. Um, <laughs> so I think I've got to go with. Uh, I think I've got to go with Death Stranding. Yeah, and I see that. You know, I've got to go with Death yeah. Stranding. Why is that? Because it's going to be the first game <laughs> that focuses on the rope. It's going to be revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I remembered that quote. <laughs> oh, you've convinced me. I'm throwing mine in Death. My cards are all going to Death Stranding now. <laughs> no, but for uh, real, I, I think it's it's a weird ass game that's like Hideo Kojima not doing Metal Gear, and it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy that's all it's gonna be epic whether it's an epic bad or epic good is only time will tell it's gonna be <laughs> something it's gonna be the first game that focuses on rope <laughs> oh man all right so uh so consent i feel like so it's it's sonic and chernobyl are are the things that ryan and i are pushing for i guess i'm also like supportive of death stranding uh, do you guys have any input on what we should land on? I'm going with Death Stranding. Yeah. The rope, man. <laughs> yeah. So Death Stranding is the most uh, interesting, for sure, topic of May 2019 in Geek News. So Death Stranding, and we're going to hear more about that probably... Um, uh, I don't know what console it's going to be affiliated with because PlayStation and Sony are not going to be at E3 this month, but I'm sure we'll have some news uh, yeah. Come yeah, people next are guessing program. that it's probably going to be it's going to be PC, Xbox, and then they're hoping, or PC and play, uh, PS4, but they're hoping it's going to be on uh, play, uh, they're hoping it's going to be on yep. Black. Can you, can you run that by me again? Yep. So people are pretty sure it's going to be on <laughs> Xbox and PS4, but they're hoping, they're hoping okay. that it's going to be on PC. Sorry, the <laughs> probably said you, you just said away. PC a bunch of times and never said Xbox. So it's going to be on PC. Be on they PC want it on PC, PC, but it might be on uh, maybe PC. Maybe I... I might, I might have a feature. Okay, so since Ryan's got the sickies, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you for listening. Uh, we'll have another Common Geeking program either a week or two weeks. We're shuffling things around, and we'll have some news on that soon. Uh, but new Common Briefing programs are the first Friday of every month right here in this feed. Um, I have been Colin Ketchin. You can find me at Sonic Colin K online. Uh, Ryan and Austin, do you have anything you would like to 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 push as a means of following? I'm on Twitter at Ryan underscore M O S S B, where <laughs> nice my uh, my tweets are mostly about uh, accusing people of Aspen. putting stuff in their butt. <laughs>
um, <laughs> for the purposes of espionage. Um, Wait, if you accus- fi- your accusations are for the purpose of espionage, or you're accusing them of engaging in espionage by putting things in their butt? The latter. Yeah, I got maybe a little drunk in 2013 and accused uh, <laughs> Jay Leno of using espionage against <laughs> Conan O'Brien. <laughs> I don't know what it meant. I just, I just sent it. He's doing. It. Yeah. I think I had just watched like Men on Fire when they were talking about the little things that like prisoners would put up their butt to hide stuff. So I was just amazing. Like, it was stuck in my head. Austin, save us from this. Do you want people to find you online or no? Um, uh, I After don't think this, so. No. Okay. Uh, so find I mean, me. I, I don't that. have anything that would be good to find me on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm like. I, I have I have a Facebook account. <laughs> I don't really post that much there. I was thinking of uh, I was thinking of maybe doing a Twitter at some point, but that's not Dude, even a real plan. I just so. got Laura on Twitter because Laura and I have a new podcast coming oh, out shit. probably this coming week. It took us about an hour to get her t- a Twitter working. Yeah. Yep, it was wild. So, hey, whatever works. Um, so that's going to wrap it up. If you want to know more about these shows, commongeekingprogram.com uh, is going to be updated quite a bit over the next month. Um, sh- uh, How You Doing is a show I'm doing with uh, Laura from this podcast as well. That should be coming out next week. It's going to have its own feed. Um, at Geeking Program on Facebook and uh patreon.com slash geeking program if you want to contribute but really we'll be back with this show in a month for more geek news and over the next couple weeks we'll have more episodes i think ryan you're gonna be you have done something with the stranger things D &D release uh yeah so there was a slight scheduling kerfuffle Mm -hmm. but we were able to work through it and uh we're gonna be talking about the stranger things D D starter set um which is a of course stranger things branded D D starter set we're going to we do a lot of comparing it to the original starter starter set which i believe just dropped to under 20 dollars nice and the stranger things is i believe the average of around 25 dollars cool so we're gonna talk a little bit about if it's worth your bang for your buck if it's a good way for old brands to use new brands to like get to a larger audience um which is definitely what they're doing trying to so kind of feeding into itself uh, stranger things talked about dungeons and dragons now dungeons and dragons is using stranger things to broaden their market um so that's yeah. very cool all right well thank you everybody for listening uh subscribe to the feed if you haven't already and we can find out who is next guilty of espionage um i i really do uh, i think i follow you on twitter ryan and i'm waiting for one day for you to get drunk and do that again like i'm just i'm counting on i'm counting down the days <laughs> uh but with that uh oh thank you for everything uh we'll talk to you uh either next week or two weeks from now depending on how the editing things fall amazing hooray oh boy yeah sad. The Common Briefing Program is produced, edited, and hosted by me, Colin Ketchin. I was joined this month by Austin Liebers and Ryan Mossbarger. The podcast is sponsored by The Sickies, recommended by two out of three podcast participants. The Common Briefing Program is a part of the Common Geeking Program. You can learn more about this project at commongeekingprogram.com, which spans multiple shows and soon multiple podcast feeds. If you want to support this, you can go to patreon.com slash geeking program, or you can share, subscribe, rate, review, anything to get this in front of eyes and inside of ears. That was, I don't want to say that again. So we appreciate everything you've done and thank you for listening to this. How the fuck do I get the computer to let me use my own your, face? Your, your camera? I don't yeah. know, but I've stared at this picture too much over the years, and I want my boy back. Um, what is that? That's Sloth? Yeah, it's Sloth. Yeah, it's Sloth. Uh, Wait, from what? From Full, from Metal, Full Metal Alchemist. Alchemist. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I only watched a couple episodes of that because it was required reading for the podcast. Yeah, I remember. Um, I won the gold star on that episode. I don't remember that. I wasn't in the episode. <laughs> Are you trying um, to get Skype to recognize your camera? It says that I'm not allowed to use my camera, be- or it says that Skype is not allowed to use the camera because something else is blocking it. Whatever the uh, fuck that means. Um, yeah, that's wild. Uh, and the only thing I can think might of be, is FaceTime. You're on, it might be permissions. It might be privacy. Yeah. Uh, go, go to Sifs Press, Sifs Press. Uh, security and privacy.
I guess. Man, I don't I don't work for Apple anymore, and my fucking like reflexive Apple awesome know how is right. really really diminishing. But yeah, no, it says sele- allow the apps below to access your camera. You know the only app that is listed and the only app that has a check mark? It's Skype. So I don't know. <laughs> Skype is just lying to me. Do you have any do you have any uh like third party antivirus, anti malware, that sort of thing? We're on Mac, Ryan. That um, was, those I, things are mixed to us. I have uh actually uh I can't um, McAfee, McAfee, but oh, that's yeah. expired and it doesn't even work with this OS oh. anymore. You probably oh, needed okay. that for, I'm guessing you needed that for school or some shit. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm going to say like sometimes they have a thing where it blocks because everybody's paranoid about their webcams now. It'll block mm-hmm. usage of a webcam if you wanted yep. to. That would 100%. be cool, but I would need to figure out how to make that happen. But more importantly, if I had done that, I could definitely figure out how to undo it. I feel D- do you think uh, that some that you can't access your camera because someone else currently is? Yeah. That'd be fucked up, but like, mm. okay. There's some, there is some chub in North Korea just like jerking <laughs> off to you trying to figure out how to figure out your camera. Uh, <laughs> I was going to... This is pleasure. I was going to assume it was like the CIA or something, but sure. I, uh... Jesus oh, yes. This man okay, has so... no idea how to change his camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so Chronograph is is not working. Uh, so this is going to be a throwback to I think episode two or three when we first figured out that we couldn't use the computer clocks to sync. Uh, we're going to use time.gov, oh, right. which is that, is that is our fallback. Uh, uh, are you going to send us a link or do we? Just it's have it's to do literally time. just time.gov. Well, so yeah, I, no, I could I, I send just... it. I wasn't sure but, how the... Oh, no, time.gov is down. Oh, boy. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> that would be fucking amazing. Oh, uh, beans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need you guys to just bark randomly, and I will do my best to line them up and hope it makes an episode. Time.gov is not showing up. We're t- Are you fucking... No, no, it's showing up for me. It says it's 7-Eleven. Oh, yeah, it is yeah. 7-Eleven. Wow. It, it's just yeah. like loading a screen, and it's not coming up for me. Time.gov. W- www.time.gov is not oh, working. Maybe I have to do www. I didn't. Oh wait, is it like a really shitty like Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> really it's really uh... Yeah, it's it's like a little green block of All right, HTML I have it. stuff. It's 7, okay. 12, uh, it's like 01. a little yep. portal yep. to 2002. Cool. Let's Ooh, clap boy. at 7 12 20. Give us All 10 right. seconds to I'm gonna, get over I'm gonna, how. Do, I'm gonna do a quick practice clap. All right. <laughs> oh god, no, please. <laughs> we did that on a previous clock. episode. Five seconds. <laughs> you, <you're... laughs> wow. Who did the practice clap? Was yours really off? Mine was really early. Um, yeah. <laughs> are you on time.gov? I am. I'm like, are you guys pranking me? What's going on? <laughs> no, I mean, it is no. flash based, so it, there's it's not exactly. Yeah, seamless. mine's been up for a little bit. So, oh, and refreshing is taking eight years, probably because there are three <laughs> of us accessing it at the same time, and that is like the most <laughs> they've had to ever well, can't they, support. Can't, can't you line it up in post with like the two clap? Uh, yeah, I certainly could. Like, I can figure it out it was like a three or four second difference i'll be fine yeah uh, <laughs> uh i'll figure it out i don't want to wrestle we with could do this a secondary anyway. i'll count down to one and we'll clap um, on one hold on let me just chronograph still down yeah Maybe what the f- f- <coughs> just <coughs> straight up no. broken all right that's not how that works back up. uh okay synchronizing 7 13 18 right now 7, 20, uh, 9, 20. It's 7, still 13, 21. It's still synchronizing for me. Oh, it doesn't boy. say time. It says synchronizing. Yes, that's what I'm trying to do. Thank you. Dot gov. Wait. Okay. So I have done a thing. Um, it's not corrected for network delay. So maybe you've got super fast internet. I don't know. I, uh, I do. Okay. Yeah, I'm at 7, okay. 13, 43. So I did the thing. I'm really pissed off about Skype, so I'm going to quit Skype and come back into the call. But I'm still recording. Yes, so, so we know, don't have to resync. That. That'll be fun. Yeah, no, the syncing is fine. Well, hey, okay, I'm going to make this a nightmare for myself. Ryan, is your clock running? Yeah, it's 7.13. Oh, just change to 7.14. Okay, good. All right, awesome. So we're going to clap. I'm going to sync up you and Austin in the first clap and me and you in the second one. Oh, so boy. let's clap at 7.14.15. Five seconds. Okay, I'm out. I'll be back soon. Bye. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, all right. That's Sweet. three-dimensional clapping right there, that kids. Is... <laughs> oh, good. Oh, man, I forgot. I turned on the new Skype blur background feature, and I just I didn't like how this looked. Yeah, it's covering up that weird dildo to your left. It... 
<laughs> when it's all blurred out, it looks very much like a dildo. So I have to enable that whenever I'm watching Japanese porn. <laughs> I'm sure that had a lips. really a really good uh, build up. Um but uh, <laughs> I d- my camera is fucked. I don't know what's going on. <laughs>